you you had a life sentence mm -hmm. and you ended up getting out. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you end up getting out? See, everybody think I got out because I told them 40 murders. That's not true. But I should let people run with that because I kept them in interviews. Yeah. But really, when Donald Trump came in the office and signed for that first step back, that's what opened the door for me. But I did give up homicides in the state. And they wrote a letter to my federal prosecutor and said, hey, he have helped close these cases. Yeah. But it wasn't just from telling on 40 uh, homicides. No. Everybody, the 40 homicides, everybody did. Yeah. I closed cases. But it was from the first step at meaning like back in the day when we got arrested, we were bound by the guidelines. Like my charge was mandatory 20 to life. Whereas now, well, the TC still like that, but crack, prime example, like you had a mandatory 10, mandatory 20, mandatories. So when they did away with the guidelines, now they became advisory. Now the judge would come and say, you know, back in the days, I had to sentence you to this. However, now I got the discretion to do this because you've been sent out of trouble or you got a lot of certificates. All that coming to play, and the judge can reduce your sentence. So that's what they did in my case. <laughs> All right, uh, let me jump way off subject. Mm -hmm. On my way here, I passed a Walmart. Mm. Have you checked that Walmart out? I'd have been to every Walmart around here, brother. Every. When I saw that Walmart, I thought about I thought about OG Gig, Mr. Elsa right back. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I love to go to Walmart and hang out, and Walmart got everything in there. Back to how long was you in prison? 22 years. No, 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 my bad. 23 years and 10 months. 23, 10. How did you cope with it? How did you like, what type of mind state did you have? And how did you get yourself to that? My family, my mother, and my children. And of course, uh, other females come and visit me, sending me pictures, asking the phone for me. You know, they always got the email in place. Send me emails, so a lot of people helped me do that bid, man. Now, hot boy turkey, I like to hold him down for eight years. Mm -hmm. Did you have anybody to hold you down for like eight years? No. Other than uh, your brothers? No. So my mother, listen, my brothers, my mother, they roll, but like my baby, one of my baby mothers, my daughter mother, like she didn't hold me down the whole eight years. Cause you know she had her like she had to live, but like I was always really talking about children now, we but I didn't have nobody to ride, one woman to ride a die chick. Yeah. For no no. Don't ride a die chick. Mm -mm. And uh, if I did, her and I be married right now. Yeah. Facts. So how was how many kids you got? Eleven. Is they all grown? No. Because you made some since you been home? Yeah. How many since you been home? One. Uh, One. So the rest of us grown then? Yes, all the rest of us grown. So yeah. you got 10 grown kids. Right. And you got one. Five, five months old now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it let y'all know it's still working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crypto, I was talking about crypto. He said, <clears throat> You good with them? You, you, you don't mind share. Yeah, that's what, that's a fact. I ain't want police no woman. So uh, you met crypto in uh prison? Yep, in federal prison. He said when he first met you, it was like a uh, he got like a, a a package. Like well, I forgot what he called like a goodie package. Like <laughs> he said like not even know me. I like shoes, this whatever he needed. I not even know him. He said, you look straight out for him. He said, anybody else from New Orleans, you made sure that you took care of. Well, Louisiana. 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 Yeah. All right. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. He said, like, it was, I forgot what type of package he said. But he we said, called yeah, it care package. Care package, yeah. Yeah. He said, but you looked out for me. And mm -hmm. I was asking him, how did y'all end up after the podcast, after getting back to the podcast? He said, he was trying to be your manager. You want to go on for that one, huh? Not at all, no. Why was that? I have a problem with somebody touching my money first. Yeah. Number one. And number two, I can manage myself. I'm not doing much. So 
And then the time he want to be my manager, I'm already hot, doing my thing. I don't need no help. Yeah. All that the manager's going to be doing is putting your hand in my money, messing up my money. You know what I'm saying? So we went back and forth about that. Then we said, let's go in and ask the guests. We went ask my guests. She was like, man, well, let me do the podcast show. I'm like, nah, you ain't doing that. Then I was thinking about it. All right. The first time he was a little stiff. Yeah. The second time he opened up. And from then, now he just took off. Yeah. He ain't nothing nice. Now he ain't to play with nothing. 